Mewing is simple. You simply watch a YouTube video and then you learn the five steps and you put your tongue against your palate and that's about it. Until you realize that maybe your tongue doesn't fit up there or maybe your tongue isn't flexible enough. Maybe it hurts or there's a tooth in the way or there's a lot of saliva and you can't breathe when you're doing it. Or maybe you haven't had your coffee for the day so you can't concentrate. Good back posture? Yeah, nobody ever asks me about that, but good tongue posture? Damn, it's complicated. I don't know why, I guess it's just because your tongue's in your mouth and you use it for eating, talking, chewing, or whistling your favorite country tune. I've taught millions of people how to mew with my video, how to mew in five steps over the past year and a half. And I feel good and bad about it. Bad because I forgot the first step, the very most important step that came naturally to me, so I didn't explain it well enough, but a lot of people are struggling with this, and now I'm making another one to redo it. Now mewing sounds simple and it the fundamentals are simple, but even though it's just correct tongue posture, something about it is counterintuitive and it feels unnatural for a long time. And despite it being a potentially life-changing form of myotherapy, cheap and free form, there's not a lot of actual information on the internet that is easy to understand and consume. As popular as that how to mew video is, it just raised more questions. But don't you worry because every little thing is gonna be all right. I'm gonna answer everything in this video. Listen up, because if you learn to mew correctly, you will slowly transfer your face into a more handsome Squidward-like structure over time, like I did and like hundreds of thousands of others are doing as per their before and after transformations in Reddit, subreddits, and YouTube videos, apparently. Or, if you like, you can also ruin your face. That one's up to you. I don't think you'll make a good impression on your new mother-in-law. I mean, she's gonna love her grandchildren no matter what, but I think she'll prefer if they didn't look like little monsters. Let's get started with the first step. The thing that comes before the first step of mewing. Nose breathing. Now, when I was playing football or soccer, depending on which continent you're from, my coach would always tell me that you should be breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth when you're running like Not on all occasions, but most of the time, that's how you should breathe. It should be through your nose and out your nose, and when you're exercising, out your mouth. Mouth breathing is basically, there's never a time that it makes sense. Even when you're really puffed because you're doing some intense workout, it doesn't actually help more to breathe through your mouth. Maybe if you're doing both, I don't know, no expert. Anyway, luckily I listened because in the last few years there's a lot of research coming out about the health benefits of nose breathing over mouth breathing. We'll get into the parts, how it, it leads to poor tongue posture and changes your face, but just, just by nose breathing, there's lots of benefits and we'll get into those in a second. But what baffles me is that nose breathing is really quite accepted as healthier than mouth breathing. Most people think that your appearance is based entirely on your genetics. I mean, we know that that's, that's stupid and like, obviously like your diet and your exercise and if someone hits you in the face with a hammer, that's gonna change how you look. So I don't know how anyone can, can really think that, but even the most skeptical of people understand that nose breathing can be the res a result of your diet or allergies from foods you eat or you have a cat in your house or something like that, which by breathing through your nose is going to change how your face looks. Nose breathing is kind of much more commonly accepted as healthier and superior than is tongue posture. Anyway, let's look at how nose breathing can change your face, how to start nose breathing, stop mouth breathing, what the benefits of nose breathing are. Does mouth breathing change your face? The answer is yes. Forgive me for a second because I wrote the answer to this down and I would just prefer to read this out. So the teeth, jaw and nasal cavities are negatively affected by chronic mouth breathing and other environmental influences. Tick. If an adult or a child is unable to maintain a consistently clear nasal airway, the body will adjust its systems to take breaths through the mouth. Yeah, that makes sense. If you have allergies and whatnot and you can't breathe through your nose, you still need air, so you're gonna breathe through your mouth. Sure. That might seem harmless, but not only does it change your face, it actually has long-term and short-term health consequences. The way you breathe, now this is coming more over to the mewing side of things, the way you breathe helps form the muscles in your face, neck, and jaw. Properly functioning and balanced muscles let your tongue rest against your palate, developing the shape of your teeth and maxilla bone. Nose breathers have good tongue posture, which creates definition of the cheekbones and a wider face through force exerted against your jaw. That's the whole concept of mewing and expanding, the ma maxilla expanding. Mouth breathers' tongues have nowhere to rest, which causes the face to move downward and inward. Chronic mouth breathers have narrow faces and poor definition 
in their cheekbones. So that sounds a lot like mewing. We've talked about mewing before. That sounds a lot like how a non-mewer versus a mewer looks. So a big part of that is the, cons the part of nose breathing. It's not just the tongue posture. So nose breathing, When now when I explain mewing, if, if I give the short answer when someone asks, I say mewing is simply nose breathing and proper tongue posture. And in my mind, both combine. You can't have one without the other. You can't have the tongue posture if you're not a nose breather, of course. <clears throat> and if you are a nose breather, you're probably going to have the correct tongue posture. It, they, they go together. If you're not sold on nose breathing, let's go through the negative effects of mouth breathing. Crooked teeth. The way you breathe forms the muscles in your face, jaw, and neck. Mouth breathing causes your tongue to rest in an unnatural position that exerts varying forces on your teeth. These imbalanced forces move your teeth around or they result or they result in a narrow palate, which means the teeth don't have enough room to grow, resulting in crooked teeth. This is the exact same thing as Mewing talks about. If you don't have the proper tongue posture, you're gonna have a narrow palate. You're not gonna have room for your teeth to grow as they were meant to, and so they're gonna be crooked because they're trying to fit into a smaller space. Recessed chin and overbite. This is probably the most obvious trait the when you see someone that's a mouth breather. The chin and jaw is not prominent. No mouth breather has this chad jaw. They have this sunken chin and jaw that sinks back into their neck. Uh, bad breath, surprisingly. Your nose is a fantastic air filter. This, these things are probably not known as, as well. But the nose, not just the hairs, but the whole system it has, cleans the air that you breathe in of bacteria and it filters it. That's partly what snot is. It's all this collected crap that it filters out and then you blow it out. So it never gets its way into your body. Your mouth doesn't do that. Whatever air you suck in, it goes straight in. There's no filter for that. Also, your mouth is moist and warm. So it's also a great place for growing bacteria. And that's what bad breath is. It's especially when you sleep, you sleep with your mouth open and this warm environment means bacteria grows. And that's what all this phlegm and crap in your mouth and this bad breath is a result of. The nose breathing is gonna result in a way better breath. It will eliminate halitosis and bad breath. Tired, droopy eyes. Inefficient breathing is one thing that gives you darker circles under your eyes. There is a lack of venous drainage. Instead, you see venous pooling where blood co collects around the eyes. In the long term, mouth breathing causes the maxilla to recede. They we're going into mewing now. And this is the foundation your eyes rest upon so they will begin to drop. So with, with nose breathing and proper tongue posture, you have proper structure here. Your cheekbones are supporting your eyes. You don't get that same baggy droopiness when these sag down from, from mouth breathing. There's more room for blood to pool underneath your eyes and that's where you get this tired droopy eyes and these, these bags under your eyes. Bad posture, both back posture and neck posture. Because of the shape of the throat, mouth breathers have to hunch over and stick their heads upwards to create an uninhibited pathway for air to enter their lungs. <clears throat> so bad posture doesn't just make you shorter, it also creates all sorts of muscle imbalances and ailments, most of which show up later in life. So so you'll also notice mouth breathers, they, they hunch over more and then they have their head sticked up like this, as I just explained, to make a clear air pathway for air because sitting up straight, your esophagus goes like this and then into your mouth and there's a kink and it's not as smooth. That's why you're made to breathe through your nose because it goes down straight. Sleep apnea and snoring, oxygen uptake from the air you breathe is much higher when it comes in through your nose than when it comes in through your mouth. Mouth breathing is a much less efficient means of breathing. It causes interrupted breathing when sleeping. And you lose, because of that, you lose, you have a loss of quality of REM sleep, which is the deep section of your sleep where a lot of the main benefits of sleep comes from and has long-term health effects and may shorten your life. I've written may shorten your life, but I'm fairly shortened that it does shorten your life if you could be getting just randomly plot number 20% higher oxygen intake from every breath your entire life and oxygen is healing and oxygenating all, all sections of your body leading to reduced lactic acid and and whatever i would imagine that would make you live longer if you were uh, if your body was functioning closer to 100 percent what the hell do i know
and a short upper lip. You'll see on mouth breathers, they have a short upper lip because the mouth is open, the upper lip is raised. Over time, it shrinks and becomes narrow. I mean, look at what happens to this boy's lip over a few years of mouth breathing. So this boy, you can see here, he, when the younger photo, he just looks like a normal boy with good posture. There's nothing particularly weak about his face. Uh, it looks like he has a strong facial bone structure. But in this story, what happens is a, a cat moved in or uh, <laughs> the cat didn't move in. I don't think he just came and started living with them and started paying rent. The parents got a cat, I think, and and he was allergic to it, so he constantly had a stuffy nose when he was going around every time he was in the house, so he started breathing through his mouth. And look, over his puberty years, instead of growing into a stronger, more masculine face, he became more rounded, and you can see how recessed his chin is. He has that short upper lip we were talking about, and those those droopy eyes, and his, his nose has become larger and more hooked. So that is what nose breathing can do if you start and what it can very slowly reverse if you stop doing it. Did I see nose breathing? I meant mouth breathing. So nose breathing is the very first part of mewing that you need to lock down before you try to do the tongue posture because the very first step of mewing as we'll get into, you have to have your mouth closed. If your mouth is closed, you can't breathe through it, right? Mm -mm. So I would say for you, unless you, if you can't breathe through your nose yet and you can't make it through the day breathing through your nose, the rest of the actual steps of mewing, you should, you should come back to those. You should just practice nose breathing first, come back to this later. Don't try to make your life too hard by doing it all at once and just failing, quitting, looking like an ugly monster. But if you are mouth breathing, you kind of have to diagnose why and you have to do that yourself. Why are you mouth breathing? Tell me! You could probably get a checkup with your doctor to see if you're allergic to anything, something that you're still eating in, in your day-to-day -day life. If you're someone that has a lot of, lot of snot and phlegm and you can't breathe because you constantly have a blocked nose, maybe you're allergic to dairy. Maybe you drink a lot of milk, but you're allergic to it. So you're constantly stuffy. So you start, so you breathe out of your mouth. I was allergic to dairy growing up. I think it's more common that kids are allergic to dairy than, than adults. Unfortunately, my mom gave me soy milk, which I learned later is full of the seed oils and crap, but that's another video. So I drank soy milk milk for the first like 15 years of my life and then I kind of allergy went away and now I drink cow's milk again but when I would drink it I would get really stuffy and I'd breathe through my mouth so it could be it could be something in your diet it could be a cat like the previous example you could have a dog do you have a cat or a dog in your house that sheds its fur that you're allergic to that you're constantly blocked up for this was also the case my parents were separated but when I would go to my mom's house she had a little Pomeranian Kevin God bless his soul and he would shed fur and I would be slightly allergic to that. It was so small that it didn't matter because there wasn't a lot of fur, but he would sleep in my bed and stuff and I would always be itchy in my throat when I was there for a few years. And that's not good. And likewise, like cleaning your home, like getting rid of dust, hair, having a place clean, that's gonna help you not be reacting to, like just dust, you don't even have to be allergic, but you can get dust in your lungs and that's gonna cause your you to be blocked up and, and mouth breathe. You can buy an air filter to do that. That's probably a good thing anyway, I've never done that. And it seems too modern day, but I mean, it's probably a great thing to have filtered air in your house or apartment. Pollen, this time of year in the summer where I am in Sweden, like, I don't know why, but it's like 30% of the people are allergic to pollen. And it's like, you've, you're from here. You've been from here for thousands of years. You have no outside genes. Like, why are you allergic to pollen how did you evolve to be this way but they are my girlfriend is one and she every time like every june gets she blows up around her eyes and gets really stuffy so that can be a big one that's it's going to be really hard to nose breathe when you're doing that all of these seem like temporary reasons to mouth breathe or like caused by things but happening once can set you down a path where you start mouth breathing just for the month of June because you have pollen allergies and you never stop for the next few years. And as you continue, it gets much harder to get back to nose breathing because your air pathways are, are used to it. And you think my nostrils just aren't big enough to nose breathe. I can't get in enough air if I try and breathe through my nose. It doesn't have to be anything m more than these things that can cause a lifetime of mouth breathing. And overall, just stress less. Yoga, eat well live a happy life, <sighs> take a deep breath, and you'll find that that makes it easier to, to breathe through your nose. If you have tension and you're stressed, then that's gonna be lead to a lot more shallow mouth breathing. So if you have any of those things, you've diagnosed them, you've gotten rid of them, you can start to learn how to nose breathe. 
it ain't gonna be easy. It might take months or years to do. I know some people that think their nostrils are too small and they just can't do it. But when they tried, they really tried, they could nose breathe after a month. It really wasn't that hard. You're just not used to it. So when you're sitting watching TV, just practice consciously to deeply breathe in and out through your nose. That's probably the best time. Or when you're driving, something like that. Every time you catch yourself mouth breathing, just stop and take 10, no, I just did a mouth breath. Take 10 deep breaths through your nose. Because when you're moving over to nose breathing, you're not gonna feel like you're getting enough oxygen. Every once in a while, if you stop, reset, take some deep breaths, replenish with oxygen, it's gonna make it easier to continue keep breathing with nose breathing until you're getting as much air nose breathing as you do, as you were with mouth breathing. Nose breathing is something that anyone can learn assuming you've dealt with the root cause. Stick to it without giving up. How to mew. Mm. The first step of mewing is to seal your lips lightly. Simple enough. So using as little lip muscle as possible, you don't need to force your lips together. Mm. Pursing your lips as the old term goes and you're not pouting. Mm. You're just closing your mouth. If you're a nose breather, which at this point you fucking should be, then you know what this feels like. This is just your resting posture. This is just a resting way that your lips sit. Now, should your teeth be touching or should they be apart? This is a big source of confusion. Every tutorial says something different. So lightly touching or apart. Don't clench, right? Don't clench. There was a post in a Facebook group actually where Mike Muir said it's better if the teeth are apart. The links to those posts are broken and I can't find them, but after hearing this from Mike, I started doing it this way. I probably have my teeth like five millimeters or like a fifth of an inch apart. I actually find that easier. Before doing that, I would have my teeth together and touching um, and it felt okay. But once I spread my teeth a little bit further apart, I actually found it easier to keep my tongue in the right position. Easier for, well, that's step three and we'll get to that. And my face actually looked better by having my teeth slightly further apart. It was just easier to maintain that without thinking about it, which is a big thing in the beginning. Overbite, now in case this isn't obvious, your front teeth should be over your bottom teeth. They shouldn't be going directly down onto each other and your bottom teeth shouldn't be in front of your upper teeth. Common sense, but as that lame expression goes, common sense isn't all that common. But of course, your top teeth shouldn't be too far in front of your bottom teeth. That's called an overbite. And your bottom teeth definitely shouldn't be too far in front of your upper teeth. That's called an underbite. Those are unique cases. Step two, which is the main thing that people think about when they hear mewing. Your tongue against the roof of your mouth. As I said, this is the part that everyone debates heatedly on Reddit and in forums and at family barbecues where there's punches thrown and half the family leaves before dinner's even served because they're annoyed. And it is super important, but it's just one part of the pie. You wouldn't bring just one part of a pie to a princess slash unicorn party. That would be ridiculous. The birthday girl would throw a tantrum and the whole day would be ruined. So you won't be able to do this if you don't follow all the five steps and the prerequisite step, which is nose breathing, which if you didn't watch, go back and watch that. Now the goal is to have your tongue your entire tongue against your palate at all times as your resting posture whenever you're not talking, eating, drinking, sucking on a lollipop, sucking on a banana, or drinking your own yellow liquid. Anyone, well, anyone with a tongue, so not pirate cotton. Anyone with a tongue should be able to at least touch the palate with the tip of their tongue. That's easy, right? And that is not mewing. You get a gold participation sticker for being able to do that, but it's not enough. This is the real world and they don't hand out participation trophies in the real world. First place gets a boar vessel 600 to 500 BC Etruscan ceramic. Second place gets some shitty refrigerator magnet. So you need to get your entire tongue up there and the most important part is the back third, which you're probably not gonna be able to do in the beginning. So you're just gonna have to accept that this, this thing called mewing will take some time, probably a few weeks or perhaps months before you can even get the back third up there because you're not used to it. Maybe there's not even enough space in your mouth to be able to do it because you've been mouth breathing your whole life. Now with your tongue against your palate, the tip of your tongue shouldn't be touching 
your teeth, right? It should be just behind your incisor teeth, your top central incisor teeth, just behind them, not touching them. And then the rest of your tongue should curl up against the palate, right, to, right all the way up to the back there, which as I talked about, the back third being the important part. Now, if you say the word sing or bing or ching, ding, any of those words, the NG, you drag that out. Mm. That is roughly the position you should have. When you say, mm, your tongue kind of has to go up on your palate to, to say that. Sing. So when you do that, your tongue is up there, but there is no suction. So the best thing for mewing is to hold it up there naturally with some level of suction, which is, you know, when you swallow the saliva between your tongue and your palate, and your tongue is just held there in place by a suction. You know, when you do, you suck onto your hand there and then pull it off. There's like a, a suction this holding it in place. So the tongue is best at rest if it is held up there with with the suction. And it's not that you're just sitting there mm, using your tongue muscle to push it up into your palate. Everyone gets this wrong. I did in the beginning. One way to know you're doing it properly is if the skin between your chin and your neck, this little bulge here, isn't there. So if you're doing it, it's kind of sucked up. If you're pushing too much with the tip of your tongue, that bulge will, it's going to bulge out. And that means the back of your tongue isn't up there or that you're using too much force. You're pushing your tongue up rather than using suction to, to hold it up. Now it could take weeks or months before you can actually get the back third up there. Uh, keep practicing, use the exercises I'll show you and you'll strengthen your tongue, neck, jaw muscles in a way that will make it much easier for them to sit up there. Keep doing it and one day it will just click. You'll be able to do it without thinking about it. Now until you can actually do it, you're going to want to know what it actually feels like so you can know if you're doing it right. And the chin tuck is a really good way to do that. All you're doing here is basically pushing your chin. You're standing up straight, first of all, pushing your chin back into your neck, trying to make a double chin. When you do that, what will happen is just by pushing your chin back into your neck, your tongue will curve up against your palate and sort of be in a similar position to, to how it should be when you're resting and when you're not doing a chin tuck, the, the mewing tongue posture you want to have. So do, do that like 20 to 30 times a day just when you're standing in the shower or you're driving or you're doing whatever baking some baking a cupcake and that will train you to get used to what it feels like to have that tongue in the right position it's also a great way to strengthen the tongue so it'll make it easier for it to actually do it tongue posture when you're sleeping is in the beginning just forget about it it's going to be so hard to do what i did and what i recommend to you is to just mew throughout your wake how do you say your waking day your wake when you're awake be mewing and then when you're sleeping just basically just forget about it because you can't ruin your sleep for for this thing called mewing but as you get better and better as mewing you're just going to mew naturally when you sleep the one thing i would say about sleeping is make sure your nose breathing when you're sleeping very important sleeping is like a third of your entire life so you can do that thing where people they tape their mouth shut and practice breathing through their nose never done it because mouth nose breathing was something i could i could pick up quite easily and the most important part of this whole tongue posture thing is don't quit you you'll ruin your day if you're walking around thinking about your tongue posture for hours not talking to people because you're worried if your tongue's going to come out of position you're just going to ruin your day you won't be able to keep that up for long before you quit and you're just going to hate mewing you're never going to do it because it was just too hard so it's more important to be consistent than it is to to be like intense so don't struggle so much that you quit because mewing isn't gonna work if you quit I hope that makes sense let me let me loosen up a little here step three is something that your mom has been screeching at you your entire life to do and she was right maybe we should listen to mom more than we do also Jordan Peterson back posture every other posture in your body is built on back posture your entire body is built on out from your back and your spine it's the thing that holds everything together that's why back in the day they used to insult people by calling them spineless yellow belly incel loving thoughts spineless means you have nothing to fall on nothing holding you together <clears throat> you can't stand on your own you're weak so stand up straight bitch it's impossible to have proper tongue posture if you don't have proper back posture so set the foundation roll the dough make the base flatten it out so your salami your mushrooms and your olives have something to land on and then cover it in cheese to keep it all stuck in place that analogy might not have made any sense <laughs> 
I just needed an excuse to make pizza. I'm not gonna go into great detail about back posture. It's simple and you're not an idiot. <laughs> Okay, just a short explanation then. Practice by standing up against the wall with your head back against it and get used to what it feels like. By far the most important thing is to just consciously thinking about it when you're sitting at your desk working, studying, playing your stupid video games. Correct yourself if you're hunching. Just like, okay, I'm hunching. Stand up straight, bitch. When you're standing and you notice yourself slouching. Yeah, stand up straight, bitch. That's the most important thing, just that you're consciously, you consciously try to improve your posture. You're aware that you have a problem and then you try and correct it. Otherwise, like, if you're bad enough, get one of those posture corrector things. They're like this strap that pins your shoulders back. It's probably worth it. I've never had a problem with it, so I don't have a lot of advice for you. Step four. Super duper important because when you swallow, you generate a huge amount of force against your palate, which plays, which plays a crucial role in expanding it and bringing your magazilla up and forward. This one is really hard to understand or I'm just bad at explaining. I'll do my best, pay attention. It'll change your life, give it some time. Now use the tip of your tongue. When you're swallowing, remember that your mouth is closed. The main idea is that you use your tongue to swallow. You're not using your cheeks to move around food or saliva in your mouth. You're not moving your jaw. You're using your tongue to scoop food, liquid, saliva, and it's pushing it against your palate and it's going down the back of your throat. Swallowing shouldn't be too visible from the outside. You should just see your Adam's apple move. You shouldn't have to be like, mm. like that. When you're doing it like that, there's something wrong, broken down. Use the tip of your tongue to scoop food, saliva, or liquid. Press it against your palate. Roll your tongue and the food rolls down it into the back of your throat. The pressure against your palate sort of pushes it down the back of your throat. So the food is rolling down your tongue into your throat and the pressure against the palate is the thing that's, as I said, the cheeks or the teeth shouldn't be doing anything, just the tongue. And if you're having trouble doing this because the food is too big in your mouth, that's a good sign that you need to be chewing it more. You need to chew it down into smaller pieces, take smaller bites. Now this one's pretty hard. If you can't do the other steps before this, the three steps before this plus nose breathing, it's gonna be pretty hard. But once you get here, it's gonna really accelerate the changes because as I said, it applies a lot of force against the Palette. This isn't a special way to swallow. This is not a swallowing technique, swallowing exercise, new and improved mewing swallow technique. This is just how we're supposed to swallow. It's just that we, we don't do it like that because we eat garbage food or we eat too much or we don't, we're running whilst we're eating, we're driving, so we're doing things and it's really hard to swallow. Whereas if you're just sitting down at a table, cutting up your food, chewing it till it's small enough, then this is how you would swallow. So this is the correct way. Nothing special. Five is the final step of mewing we're gonna break down how you should be chewing so if you don't chew properly you won't be able to swallow properly you also will build your buccinator muscles in your cheeks which can lead to the puffier cheeks type look destroying any chance of getting hollow cheeks also Chewing correctly should emphasize the masseter muscles. They're the main masticatory muscles. Secondarily is the temporalis and there's other two other smaller ones in here. But the majority of chewing force exerted should come from the masseter. So if you're chewing properly, these will be stimulated. Be larger if you're a man, probably not if you're a woman, it's a lot harder. Which gives you that a great jawline look. If you're not chewing properly, you're not gonna work these. This isn't where the force will be exerted. So you won't have these and they look good you're gonna build the temporalis instead. As your mouth is more open, if you're chewing larger things, these take over more than the masseters and you'll build up these temporalis muscles instead, which gives you that nice balloon head look. It looks bad. But let's break down how to chew. If you're a girl, don't worry about building up these. You can't really build them up a lot at all from, from just chewing regular food. You need harder things, jawline exercises, mastic gum, jawline gum, things like that to actually build them because our modern diets aren't actually hard enough. Back in the day when we were chewing roots and bark and all that stuff, meat that was really tough, then you would actually build these just by eating. But yeah, sipping your yogurt for breakfast isn't gonna isn't gonna build them. The most important thing for chewing is to never chew with your mouth open. The wider open your mouth is, the more the wrong muscles take over, the more you use your buccinators and your temporalis. So you should be chewing with your mouth closed. Also, when it's open, you're gonna stress your TMJ joint a lot more. This is where your jawbone connects to your skull 
up in here you don't want tmj problems or soreness or stiffness now the second part apart from chewing with your mouth closed is to chew slowly because when you chew slowly a you chew into smaller pieces which make it easier to swallow b smaller pieces make it easier to digest which is also healthier faster digestion and three by chewing for longer chewing it smaller you're also signaling to your brain that you're more satiated you're more more full and that will mean that you eat less, consume less calories, which is also not just good for weight loss, but for longevity of your cells. Chew with your mouth closed, chew with your teeth, and don't use your cheeks to move around food. You chew with your teeth and you move food with your tongue. And that's it. Congratulations, my friend. You know how to mew. Now you can't mew yet, but you know how to. So get started today. Watch this video, it's up there somewhere on how to make mewing a habit so you don't have to spend your entire day thinking about it. And pat yourself on the back because you're in the home stretch. Now just don't fuck it up.